In this lecture, we will introduce an important terminology, reaction cross-section, that is a central feature of nuclear reactions. The notion of cross-section, let's say in chemical reactions, goes uh, much further. For a long time, it has been around because our notions of chemical reaction first nucleated from classical mechanics. You imagine, let's say, a spherical object reacting with another object. So this object offers certain cross-section uh, for collision. So you can think about the reaction cross-section in terms of the radius of this object. Okay, So you can uh, look at this wiki link. Uh, to get an idea. So this has been around much uh, before uh, quantum mechanics or uh, nuclear sciences. Okay, So as a first approximation, you can get an idea of the cross-section in terms of the radius of the objects that are colliding. So with this notion in mind, let us move on. So in the context of nuclear reaction, also in the context of chemical reactions, sigma indicates the probability of nuclear reactions to occur, okay? So greater sigma, that means uh, the chances of reaction will be greater. So it is indicative of the cross-section offered by the nucleus to the projectile with which the nucleus is reacting. So it is crucially dependent on energy of the projectile. We'll see why, but it depends upon the detail of the reaction. We cannot generally say whether sigma increases or decreases. Uh, uh, we'll look at this, okay? Because the nuclear radius is very small, there is a special unit that is utilized for uh, reaction cross-section in the context of nuclear reaction. Uh, one bond is 10 to the negative 24 centimeters squared. Okay, so cross section uh, has a unit of L, as a dimension of L squared. Uh, this is the unit that is typically used for nuclear reaction. So, in terms of a particular formula, the way to define uh, sigma is the number of product nuclei of one type. So, there can be many products. Uh, that are possible, uh, at least with respect to a particular product, uh, number of product nuclei of one type per unit time per second per target nucleus, okay? divided by the number of projectiles uh, per unit area per second. Okay? So this is the way to define sigma, one way to define sigma. Within this definition, we can define the reaction rate, right? So just applying this formula, we can see that the reaction rate can be represented as N sigma I, wherein N refers to number of target nuclei per centimeter. Okay, so, and this is an aspect related to the projectile, the intensity of projectile per uh, second. Putting all these together, we can, have a formula for reaction rate. So just to give you some idea on features of uh, reaction cross-section, I'm presenting some data from this book. Uh, to begin with, you should notice a feature. M many of the projectiles have to ha ha seem to have this particular energy. Why so? We already mentioned why this 0 0.026 uh, electron volts is important because that is the KT available um, to you at room temperature. K is the Boltzmann constant. T is the, let's say, room temperature. So this is the energy, half KT is the energy available per degree of freedom at room temperature. So typically, we are thinking about, I think, 20 degrees centigrade. So these are what are called, uh, let's say, 
thermal neutrons. Okay, so here the projectile is neutron. Uh, these are thermal neutrons. So that is why many of uh, the projectile uh, seem to have the same energy because these are thermally uh, without any further acceleration. These are projectiles that are just thermalized. Uh, let us move on. Okay, so as I mentioned, this is a number we should not forget. Okay, that is, this is a number that you should not forget. Uh, it's it's very, very relevant to any kind of process. Okay, not just nuclear reaction. 26 milli electron volts at room temperature. That is the value of um, Boltzmann constant time temperature. Remember equipartition theorem, which says that every degree of freedom, that is a degree of freedom, is a mode uh, with which you can store energy, thermal energy. Every degree of freedom has half kT um, at equilibrium. So this is a number that's useful to have in mind. Okay, so let's move on. So let's look at some other features. So here I'm comparing to similar reaction. In this reaction, you have neutron colliding with um, isotope of hydrogen, giving rise to another isotope of hydrogen that has relatively low cross-section. Compared to that reaction, nuclear reaction, neutron colliding with helium seems to have, and forming the same product, seems to have much higher cross-section. Uh, uh, remember that helium has two nucleus and uh, hydrogen has only, I mean, helium has two protons, whereas hydrogen has a single proton, okay? So we are not, going to deduce uh, all the fundamental reasons why cross-sections are different, but we are going to just allude to some reasons, uh, some general features of reaction cross-section. So here you have, uh, again, as two similar reaction. Um, here, just with gamma emission, uh, boron, um, gets converted, that is you have, let's say, neutron colliding with a boron, there is an increase in atomic mass, uh, and the product that is the emission that comes out of the reaction is gamma. So here reaction cross-section is lower, but when a neutron collides with this nucleus to form lithium with the emission of alpha particle, uh, the reaction cross-section is significantly higher, all right? So this is an important feature to notice. Then we'll move on to another uh, related, uh, two related reactions. Here, you have only proton emission. Um, here, you may have more than one emission. You have proton plus neutron emission. Um, then um, the just the projectile energy in these two cases, in both the cases, it is alpha, but because that's a charged object, it is much more easier to change the kinetic energy of the projectile. So with increase in kinetic energy, the reaction cross-section increases marginally, not too much, but it does increase. Here, what you have is, again, you have proton as a projectile. It's a charged object, again, using accelerators. It is possible to increase the kinetic energy of the charged object. So you can increase the kinetic energy. And uh, with increase in kinetic energy, you have the same product, uh, same kinds of emission, uh, proton colliding with this nucleus forming zinc with emission of neutron. With increase in kinetic energy, the reaction cross-section increases. You may intuitively have this notion, right? So when you increase the energy of the reactants, the reaction rate should increase. Therefore, the reaction cross-section should increase. That intuition is valid here. It's also valid here. But interestingly, this is not at all valid here, right? So when you have uranium, uh, notice this atomic mass of uranium is odd uh, number. We'll look at all these reasons more deeply at a later stage. But some general features is 
uh, are to be noticed now. So you have thermalized neutron colliding with odd numbered, um, and that is atomic mass of uranium. Uh, here is 235. The other common atomic uh, mass you might have seen is 238. Here, uranium neutron collides with 235. When a thermalized neutron collides with U235, the reaction cross-section is significantly larger than um, a neutron with much higher kinetic energy colliding with U235. Okay, So the products are fission, uh, but at higher projectile energy, the cross-section is much lesser. Okay, So this is a very counterintuitive aspect uh, which we will look at at a later stage uh, in the series of lectures. Let's move on. Uh, we will look at uh, certain other features of reaction, uh, nuclear reaction cross-section in the next lecture. Thank you.